Jesus. This is a review on my Kimber TLE RL2 1911. Had this 1911 for about a year now, and up to this point, I've had um, quite a bit of experience with it. I don't really feel comfortable giving a gun a full review, a tabletop type review, until I've put at least a couple thousand rounds through it and at least shot um, at least a few matches with it preferably of uh, different types, like static steel or knockdown steel, uh, USPSA type of matches. Uh, with this particular gun, um, I don't know how many rounds I've put through it now. I mean, it's probably up to, it's got to be over 3,000. Um, and I've probably shot at least five, six matches with it, and of uh, different types too, you know, knockdown steel, static steel, uh, several USPSA uh, matches. So. At this point, I'm, I'm pretty familiar uh, with the with the gun. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll start with the quality fit and finish, and um, then move on to the performance and reliability of the gun. I went with uh, a Kimber at the at the time I bought this gun. I really didn't know a whole lot about 1911s. Um, not that I really know a whole lot more now, but I. To me, when I was looking around, um, I just personally liked the overall look and appearance and um, finish of, of Kimbers. They had the most appeal to me of all the 1911s. Um, looks may or may not matter to people when they're buying a handgun, um, but they matter to me to a point. I do like Glocks, and Glocks are really ugly. But with a 1911 especially, I feel that... Um, it's even more important because so many brands make 1911s. So There's just tons of them out there, right? So to really to really pick amongst them, you know, I think looks just holds a, a little bit more more weight. You know, I mean, if you were if you're shopping for just a regular polymer semi-auto, there's it's not like there's a lot of variations of Glocks or a lot of variations of um, the uh, you know MMPs or Sigs, you know. They are what they are, but the 1911, there's there's many, many different makes of them. And I chose uh, the Kimber, I chose this particular model of Kimber because it had pretty much everything I wanted in a in a 1911. The front, uh, front strap checkering, back strap checkering, the extended safety, the uh, skeletonized hammer and trigger, um, the rail, even though I, I never use that, I just... To be honest, uh, it's just kind of a mall ninja thing, just like the way it looks. Uh, the front serrations, it has the also the checkering on the magazine release, which is a nice touch, a little bit here as well on the slide stop. Um, came with night sights, although I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of night sights, but um, they they're all right, they're all right. Uh, so that's why I went with it. And just overall, I had the look and appearance that I was that I was going for in a 1911. You know. Now, when I first got it and handled it, the uh, I you know immediately struck me as a very tightly put together 1911. Quality is definitely there. Uh, as far as the reliability, though, there was uh, it was a little bit up and down. Um, the first 250 rounds. It went fine, but then I got to the, uh, after that, what, what would happen is it would start locking back prematurely in the middle of um, a magazine. It wouldn't lock back quite like all the way here, but uh, the slide the slide stop would get caught maybe like halfway to the um, uppermost position. And so uh, Kimber, I called Kimber, let them know 
they sent me um, a new slide stop and uh, apparently um, the difference was they they just rounded out this end here a little bit you know this one's kinda angled this is the one that was giving problems and the one they gave me was sanded down a little bit uh, problem is though they gave me that and I shot a little bit more and the problem came back within a hundred rounds so uh, I sent it back to them and uh, they held on to it for about a month customer service with them was was all right a month is I guess kind of typical I mean I've heard of guns coming back as soon as two weeks but month wasn't wasn't so bad uh, all things considered they did a couple things I the original the original uh, slide that I got was the one with the external extractor this was actually made in 2000 this particular model was made in 2005 and around that time they were going from the external extractor to what you see here with the uh, internal extractor so I requested that I got, got the internal extractor just to make sure that that wasn't the issue and they did that for me so that was nice uh, then they said that they modified the uh, slide stop a little bit further um, so when I got the gun back uh, unfortunately it still locked back prematurely and um, I read about it I just actually happened to go to a, a Barnes & Noble to read about I, I, I think it was Gun Buyer Digest they had a book about the 1911 and it just so happened to mention that 1911s when they shoot hollow point ammunition uh, what happens is it can happen to any 1911 apparently uh, it's very hard to see in here. I don't really know if you guys are going to be able to get a, get a good look, but when the um, if you shoot hollow point ammunition, what happens is when the round is feeding through the hollow point ammunition, you know, if you shoot just regular uh, round nose ammunition, it looks like that, right? But hollow points tend to be a little bit wider at the base, and that wider base, uh, when it's feeding into the the chamber, it tends to uh, rub up against the, the slide stop. I don't know if you guys can see it, but basically what happens is as it's um as it's feeding, it just gently bumps the slide stop a little bit and that gives the slide stop just enough motion to lock back prematurely. So the way you get rid of that, as I put in the book, was you just sand it down, which is probably why it's probably probably why they gave me this slide stop that was rounded off, but it just wasn't rounded off enough even after they gave it back to me um, so I took a little bit more sandpaper sanded it down tested it out and uh, I would notice actually that on the edge here it would pick up um, the shavings from the plating of the bullet right right here and uh, so sure enough you know that's exactly what's happening to my to my uh, 1911 and after I sanded it it's been it's been um, trouble free so that's all it was, uh, something very simple. I just kind of wish that Kimber would have would have caught that, and I would have got the ba gun back, you know, a hundred percent. You know, it's kind of disappointing after. Well, it's kind of disappointing just generally because you would expect a, if you put in, you know, if you buy a thousand dollar nineteen eleven, you'd want it to work right out of the box uh, right away. But things happen, you know. I mean, they happen to Glocks, they happen to Sigs, it can happen to anything. So, but you know, after you send it back and they give it back to you and you've been waiting for it for a month and you would kind of expect it to work definitely hundred percent by then and unfortunately I just don't think they um, either they didn't diagnose the problem or they just didn't do enough to get rid of the problem um, you know I'm not I'm obviously not a gunsmith or anything like that and uh, you know I just happened to catch an article um, or uh, you know pick up a book about 1911s just being in Barnes and Noble randomly and, and read about that and end up fixing the problem myself you know if, if, if someone like me can can do that I just I would have expected that um, Kimber would have done the same that's all. so uh, but since I've had it back uh, it's been a hundred percent probably about 500 rounds since I've sanded down the slide stop shot two or three matches with it and it's been flawless um, so that's good you know um, as far as the performance this is a gun that I shoot best and most accurately with and it is my favorite gun to shoot I don't think uh, well who knows if I'll right now my the plan is to keep this gun I, I, I really like it the trigger is extremely nice extremely extremely nice uh, the, the overall feel of the handling of the gun is extremely nice and it's extremely accurate here's just a couple 
plates. Uh, this is seven yards, and they could pretty much do that all day. You know, a couple magazines, and you're pretty much looking at a big, big old ragged hole. Ten yards, as you can see, not much of a difference. You know, very, very tight group. And the uh, this is the one, this is the one pistol of my. Um, small uh, small collection of, of firearms that I can consistently uh, and comfortably and confidently shoot at 25 yards at a, at a plate like this. This is uh, 15 shots at 25 yards so for the most part as you can see it, it stays you know relatively uh, a decent group you know and this is just offhand uh, two, two hand hold you know you could pretty much do this all day you know and I think that's awesome I think that's I think it's great how how well it uh how well it shoots and in matches it's just, it's been you know it's it's just a it's just a really fun gun to shoot in matches that's that's the main reason why I started uh shooting limited 10 and eventually I want to start shooting single stack uh in USPSA is just to shoot this gun you know I just I like shooting it so much um I started shooting those divisions just so I could get more trigger time with this gun and I started using this gun in uh steel yeah, static steel and knockdown steel, you know, just because it's a it's a it's a great performing gun, um, and very 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 fun gun to shoot. So overall, you know, after after this whole uh, thing with the slide stop was fixed, it's uh, it's been awesome. You know, it's been 100%. Uh, in regard to timber quality um, and reliability, I'm sure a lot of people watching this hear a lot of stuff about Kimber. Um, a lot of um, people saying that they're, you know, not all that, or they're uh, overrated, or they're just complete junk, or whatever. Um, you know, as a Kimber owner, and even after going through all that, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't completely dismiss them. You know, uh, would I buy another one? To be honest with you, yeah, I, I, I might. And but you know, I'm, I'm different. I'm the type of guy who, you know, if there's something wrong with uh, something that I buy. And uh, it, it, I, you know, it gets it gets remedied because it because it, it was an it was an issue that was uh, easily di diagnosable and um, and fixed. It wasn't something because you know it wasn't something like just a, like like you know they put on the slide backwards or something totally crazy, um, you know. And after that particular issue is fixed, that everything's running fine. I'm okay with that, you know. But some to some people that's that's unacceptable, you know. And and I I don't fault them for that at all. I could I can totally understand why. Especially when once you start getting towards the upper end of uh, middle to upper end of, of 1911s or, or guns generally, your expectations should be higher. So you know if somebody got this and they went through what I went through and they're like, you know what, that's it with Kimber, I'm done with them. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't blame. Them. I wouldn't say that's an overreaction at all. But me personally, um, I just look at it as, hey, you know, I got I got that issue, but it is sorted out and still overall I really like the the gun a lot. So um, take you you gotta you gotta um, you got to read it. If you, if you guys if if you guys are out there looking for a 1911 or considering a Kimber, uh, talk to people who who own them. Uh, don't don't listen to just hearsay on, uh, from people who who haven't actually owned them. You know that that would be my advice, especially for for Kimber because they they kind of get uh, a little bit more a little bit more of the the general internet criticism than any other gun. Uh, maybe it, maybe it is for good reason. You know, I'm not. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I I don't know. I don't want to say either way. I'm just saying that you know, uh, take everything with a couple grains of salt if it's from the internet. And um, what's better is if you if you meet members at your uh, at your gun club. The, I think the best advice if you just see people at the gun club, you know, at the gun range, and you see them shooting a the Kimber, you know, ask those people because they actually own it. They're shooting it. I really think that those are really the 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 people to ask you know people who actually own it or if it's on the internet you know at least listen to people who claim that they own the gun not just you know a friend of a friend of a friend or I heard this or I heard that you know so that's kind of um, my little side rant on that but overall uh, awesome 1911 favorite gun to shoot I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review and if you have any questions or comments let me know thanks for watching.